morning ladies and gentlemen man here welcome back to the channel today is a training day and it's a beautiful day actually the rain has cleared up finally which means that there is enough uh, good circumstances I would say outside here to get a nice core session and antagonist session done some planche attempts maybe and some handstand push-ups so that's the first thing that's gonna be part of today's training vlog I think and after that I'm gonna hit the gym and that's actually a rope climbing gym out here so um, yeah, I'm gonna train some rope climbing essentially gonna make some shots about that maybe get a little bit of a voiceover done to kind of document what I'm doing and yeah I hope it's gonna be a nice day um, yesterday was the day of the <laughs> live stream hangboard session which went great as well but I did this in the morning you know and today's rope session is gonna occur in the evening which means that I'm gonna still have enough break enough of a break enough of a rest in between those two kind of finger intense sessions so that it still makes sense you know so yeah on the menu today a nice little core and antagonist session and after that we're gonna hit the gym in the evening doing some rope stuff let's get it done Quite early in the morning and the grass is still a little bit wet which makes it kind of interesting from a balance point of view because you're slipping around on the grass surface a little bit say the session feels pretty good so far feeling pretty strong today so let's try the planche oh. yeah getting there getting there Feels like I haven't been progressing on this move for a long, long, long time. Damn. Feels like I'm not really progressing on this move, which is quite a bit annoying. But at the same time, I know that I'm quite heavy at the moment. So yeah, I've got legs to carry on this move. Definitely, I can feel it how they how they drag me down. Um, I'm quite sure if I would fast now, like three, four days or something shred myself down I would probably be able to do it but I don't want to fast right now because I'm such it goes so good with the with the hypertrophy at the moment so yeah keep training hard with the heavier weight and then come back super strong once I'm light it's a strategy So welcome back to the climbing gym my friends as you will notice for sure this is a different climbing gym than we than where we are usually at in Vienna this is a climbing gym that is located in a town called Fürstenfeld in the yeah, in Styria it's actually to the south of Vienna quite a lot to the south actually on the countryside and um, yeah they have a pretty nice rope climbing gym there it's kind of it's a bit smaller then uh, everything that I'm used to and yeah quite cozy and yeah awesome walls and I did a little bit of root setting there and also a little bit of training during the past couple of weeks and I have to say I like it a lot and this is actually the thing that you're seeing at the moment this little boulder traverse here is a boulder that I've set recently 
Um, I think it's around 7B plus or 7B or something like that. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty small holded, and uh, you know, really, I don't know, kind of complex when it comes to the stepping beta. It's a lot of uh, foot switches and a lot of, you know, as you can see, you gotta get really, really low. Use your flexibility here because this is something that I wanna get, I wanna touch on here real briefly. If you're having very slopey holds, really bad slopey holds then you know staying with your center of gravity as much as possible below the hole actually is going to make that hold better or at least make it as good as it can be now in order to be able to do that especially with high footholds you gotta have flexibility to really get into those knees you know bend your knees and stuff this is kind of a really cool um finishing dyno that i've got here I like it a lot. The main take home message from this boulder is basically um, get your flexibility on point to be able to get that center of gravity below those slopers, especially if you're having high footholds. So unfortunately I reopened a little bit of a split of mine that I got in the um, hangboard session that I did before the hangboard session yesterday. Um, which I live streamed during this live stream hangboard session. I reopened it because I was using a shit ton of bonus weight basically, and so I had to tape that up. Now, as I mentioned previously, I only use tape for surface injuries, not against any inner stuff like joint or tendon pain or pulley pain or anything like that. The way I do it is simply I use a double layer and the um, the proximal end of the tape so to say has to overlap the distal end of the tape because then you won't open it up during the process of climbing if that makes sense and i do this once at the beginning of the session and it's gonna hold up for the whole for the whole session basically it doesn't need to be super tight because if you're doing it super tight you're gonna uh, you're gonna impact the blood flow to the negative and i don't want to do that all right the surface damage is taken care of we moved on to the lead climbing session right afterwards and what i'm basically going to do for this little training vlog here is i'm going to showcase two of the routes that i climbed during this session what we're looking at here is a 7a plus that i tried to on site for my warm-up with these dark green holes here as you can see you know what i'm gonna do is i'm simply gonna watch myself climbing and if i see something special that i want to comment on then i'm gonna do that i'm gonna pause the video lose a few words about that and then i'm gonna keep watching so the cool thing with uh, warm-up routes is usually then you you know you're not gonna choose a route that is super hard for you that wouldn't make any sense so this allows you actually to pay close attention pay special attention to your technique during the warm-up and this is also what i always do when i'm warming up for lead climbing now here i'm actually doing a little bit of a reading mistake as you can see i should have gone with my right hand to this edge here which causes me to um, climb down here again in a kind of an unbeautiful manner letting my feet go now i'm reaching further and now this next move works out well as well and then I'm, I'm able basically to grab this undercling here with my right hand now if you pay a little bit of attention to my clipping strategy here is uh, my clipping strategy is like that I clip kind of late actually I always wait until the next quick draw is at the height of my hips and then I grab the rope and smash it in real quickly this is kind of efficient again this is something that you can pay special attention to during your warm-up go actually because usually in your warm-up routes the holds are not going to be that bad you have to pay special attention to reach your clipping holds now imagine you have a harder route basically to do here and you always have to wait until a good hold comes along to um, you know enable you to clip efficiently now during a warm-up attempt you basically can try try to pay special attention to efficient clipping you know always clip when um, the next quick draw is at the height of your hips do not over clip which means um, do not lock off holds more than necessary basically to reach the next quick draw and usually then there is also no necessity to put the rope in your mouth and you know fiddle around with the rope and in general it's going to make your climbing a lot more efficient now as you can see um, uh, i really try to step fast here although i reached this um, this kind of resting hold in the middle of the route there or close to the end of the route actually um, i decided to keep just keep climbing keep up the flow i wasn't that um, pumped or anything so I just wanted to have a good warm-up uh, on-site attempt here and that's what I did. Now unfortunately the way I filmed this, um, not the whole route uh, has space on the f in the frame here, the, the whole route doesn't fit into the frame. 
um, which is why we cannot view the last five meters or so of the route. But it's not really a big deal for now. It's not that hard uh, anymore up there. And I basically was able to finish this route up in my on-site attempt for my warm-up. So yeah, kind of a good start of this session. Um, the next thing that I tried, and I tried this actually right afterwards during my next attempt, was this gray 7C+, plus actually. And this was not an on-site attempt. I uh, already tried this route, I think, once or twice before. And um, as you can see, it's it's kind of really slopey. It has a, has a really slopey character and it follows this corner here, this corner of the wall. And as it is often the case with these corner climbs, there are a lot of heel hooks involved in the beta of this climb. As you can see here, really high left heel hook. And again, if you're finding those heel hooks, try to get your clippings done out of the heel hook because it's going to make your clipping so much more efficient. Heel hooks, if you can make them around this, around that corner style, um, you can take a lot of weight off your hands actually. So that's kind of uh, cool with this line here as well. Now um, we're getting into this undercling basically, stepping really high. Now I did not really try this route that often so far, so I don't have a definite bait beta basically that I'm following um, when climbing this thing. But what you can notice right away is that um, the clipping is not so much more, um, so much efficient, as efficient as it was during this warm up go. I basically have to wait for good holds to do my clipping to keep my clipping as efficient as, as possible. And sometimes that means that I have to lock off this hold, you know, a bit to clip the next quick draw as well. Now in this situation, this is actually quite interesting because here I did a front flag. And this is something that I do very, very rarely. Now the thing is that I have a kind of under clingy hold in my left hand. And the next hold is this um, hold up there, this hold right up there. Due to the, the previous route, basically, I ended up on this foothold with my left foot. Now, the thing is, I would have liked much more to stay on that foothold, to stand on that foothold with my right foot, because then I could do a back step, turn in my right knee to the left, and simply reach over to this next hold. Now, the problem is, I was there with my left foot. Now, I have two options, basically. I can do a foot switch and a, the, the corresponding back step right afterwards, or I can simply do a flag. Now the cool thing with a flag is, and I've mentioned this um, in previous technique, technique episodes already, a flag can in some situations compensate or substitute basically a, a foot switch and uh, the corresponding back step. It doesn't have exactly the same mechanical consequences than this stuff, but it's kind of similar. So if you're able, if you have the feeling that you're able to do the next move despite that, you can actually save some time by um, sparing the foot switch and the back step and simply do a, a flag. And the cool thing is that most of the times it also going to, it's also going to make the process of keeping climbing a lot easier because you don't have to make another foot switch that usually is necessary, uh, is required when you're going for the foot switch back step solution. Another reason why I chose the flag here before the back step basically is that I have an undercling in my left hand and you know doing a foot switch from an undercling is actually quite unpleasant. It's quite, it's quite hard because you're getting a lot of weight on your feet and this can be a special problem is the, if the foothold is really bad as it is the case in this scenario here so all these reasons made my climbing instinct so to say go for the front flag i did not check this out before it just came about basically during the flow of this climb so let's see how i continue as you can see i just can i'm just able to step on this right foothold here without any uh, additional backs uh, without any additional foot switch and this is thanks to the flag because I did not have to do the initial foot switch in the first place. Um, and now we are actually entering the crux of this climb. As you can see, there is this alien head above there. And I have to do a really high lock off to get there with my left hand. As you can see, super high left foot, super high lock off with the right hand and grabbing this alien head on the top, on the, on the head basically, where it is super slopey and it feels like you're slipping off that in, the, in an instant. And then I'm basically matching it, grabbing the eye of the alien and here, we have yet again another flaggy, another flag position. Um, again, I could do the foot switch and the back step, this time with my left knee. I would turn in my left knee and do just the same, do, same move. 
But then again, I would have to make another foot switch right afterwards to be able to keep climbing. So let's see how I continue this time. As you can see, simply staying there with my right foot, making the next clip, which is not as hard because, the, because this uh, hole is actually quite good. And then you have to get a really high foot here, crank down this um, slopey edge and get a really high heel hook on this alien head. And this is actually a beta that I checked out before. I did not know this in my on-site attempt, which was the reason why I failed there in my on-site. Um, yeah, but this time I knew it. Really cool solution, I think. So from there on, it's not over. The next, the next few moves are kind of hard as well. Um, which is why I decided to not clip any more quick draws until I uh, basically reach the, so to say, the finishing hold, which is already out of the frame again. I'm sorry for that, but um, yeah, if you reach the finishing hold, basically you can you you get quite a decent shake out there, and from there it's only like three four meters on uh, also quite bad holds. But since you get a shake out before that, that that's not really a lot of a problem anymore. So I was able to um, finish this route as well. It was really a good session. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the little analysis here of my lead climbing attempts. As I said, this is a really cool climbing gym and I plan to do um, more training sessions there in the future. So yeah, expect more of these kind of analytic lead climbing training vlog episodes. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below if you did. Give me some feedback. And yeah, until then, um, I hope you're having a great time as well. It's really cool. I'm getting stronger by the day, I have the feeling. And soon we are also getting another outdoor climbing day in. And we'll try to make a little bit of a vlog of that one as well, maybe. So have an eye out for that. And um, until then, I'll see you soon in the next one, guys. Bye.